Greetings, folks, and welcome to today's show. Uh, as we've been saying for some weeks now, we're in the middle of the election season, and uh, it's a good one, and we're getting closer. The next election, uh, which is a big one, is the uh, August the 2nd, Thursday, August the 2nd. Uh, it's the primary uh, race for state and national government positions and the final race for all of the county and city positions. So it's a, uh, it's a big race, a very important one. So want to, uh, we hope to inform you a bit and also encourage you to get out there and vote. Our, our turnout is abysmally low. We ought to be kind of ashamed of it, frankly. Uh, one of the most interesting uh, and important races we've got going is for the county mayor. And uh, this morning, uh, we have the three candidates for county mayor uh, joining us here, and we want to find out uh, where they think the county ought to be going. Uh, they are, uh, uh, starting from the outside in, Gary Cordell, who is uh, a Republican and the current uh, mayor, have served, uh, what, Gary, one, two terms? This first term. First term, okay. And uh, but he wants to he wants to do it again. Next to him is uh, David uh, Pennington, and David we're familiar with. He's already been the mayor for a time or two, and in the in the meantime he's uh, busy in the business world. And uh, next to him we and David's running as a Democrat, of course. Uh, next to him is uh, we have an independent candidate, uh, Mr. Tim Brown. So uh, no party tied to him, or he's not tied to any party. So maybe that's interesting. We'll see. Uh, let me give uh, each of you a chance to uh, say a little something about yourself uh, fairly briefly. Uh, Gary, you want to start? Uh, I'm Gary Cordell, your current county mayor. My wife's name is Charlotte. We have two sons and eight grandchildren. We've been in Hillsboro for uh, almost 35 years. And it's an honor to be here to represent you as your county mayor. Looking forward to another term. And uh, we'll go on some other data later on. Right, okay. But I'm welcome the opportunity to be here today and talk with the people of our county. Okay. David? Well, looks like we've got about 16 seconds. Uh, I'm David Pennington. I was your mayor for uh, two terms. And I was born and raised here in Coffee County. Matter of fact, I was born here in Tallahoma and moved to Manchester when I was uh, 15 years old and uh, always been in business and uh, uh, look forward to working with the people again, try to get those jobs in retail here. Why do you want to run again? I want to get more, you know, I was, I was retired for four years here on the mayor's side, but people are always coming up to me and talking to me about jobs and more retail. You know, and that got to, that just pushed the button. And jobs and retail is what we need. Well, I mean, um, when I was mayor for eight years, we uh, recruited $240.6 million worth of industry and 2,968 industrial jobs. And you know, Tom, <clears throat> that um, retail is kind of greedy. If you got the jobs and you got the money, they're going to follow where the money is. And yes. That's why, that's why I want to run again. I want, I want to be able to. Okay, very good. Uh, Tim, tell them a little bit about you. I've been in Coffee County all my life, born and raised here. All my family's from here. I served in the military for 30 years in the Army Reserve, retired as a Master Sergeant. 2006. 30 years in the Reserve? How well, much? Active in Reserve. Yeah, how much active? Eight years. Eight. And uh, I've got a wife, four children. Got two that's left the county because hard to find a job here, and two still at home. In 2006, the Army sent me to New Orleans to work with the Army Corps of Engineers. The Army Corps of Engineers hired me down there to oversee the rebuilding of New Orleans, and they put me on a $16 million budget, and I rebuilt a, a hospital and a school and stayed under budget. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, with that, folks, let's take a short commercial break and we'll come back and get into some issues. All 
I have to do to think about what I was physically before and what I am now, and I don't ever want to go back to that original situation. The overall mission of the rehab team is always what is best for the patient and how we can facilitate maximum potential from every resident. Well, the most important thing to me is that I'm allowed to do whatever I need, want to do, you know. Everyday miracles at Life Care Center of Tullahoma. When I was growing up in Coffee County, I saw firsthand the need for good paying jobs. When I was county mayor, working with other dedicated Coffee Countyans, we recruited $240.6 million in industry investment in Coffee County. 2,968 new good paying jobs to Coffee County. I'm David Pennington, candidate for Coffee County Mayor, and I ask you to join me and help make Coffee County an even better place to live and work. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jerry Harris. I've been providing communication services throughout the United States since 1985. But instead of me telling you about the services I provide, I'll let some of my clients speak for me. Hi, I'm Nancy Jernigan with Coffee County Realty and Auction Company. Jerry came to see us some time back, and even though we weren't ready for our phone system, he looked at our bill and he saved us over $200 a month. When we get ready for our new phone system, I'm sure we will be calling Jerry. Host My Calls is by far the best service I have ever placed with any of my clients. It provides cost-saving solutions while providing great communications. Call me today, 931-581-4411. See how Host My Calls can save you. We're back, folks, and we're talking today with the uh, three candidates for Coffee County Mayor. They are uh, Gary Cordell, the incumbent, David Pennington, uh, who is uh, running again, uh, he's the Democrat, and Tim Brown, who is running as an independent. So we want to find out what they're all about. <clears throat> Let's just uh, say that uh, I have a, uh, well, a complete stranger of some sort, or better still, a promising industrial prospect uh, looking at Tullahoma or Coffee County in addition to other places. So uh, tell him, uh, let's, uh, let's sell him on why the decision should be Coffee County. Well, uh, David? Okay. Well, as I time. told you before, in eight years we recruited $240.6 million worth of industry. And now, that, now that was only in equipment and land investment and 2,968 jobs. So how do we do that? Number one, and when I say this, this is a fact, we got one of the better industrial boards in the state. And how I can back that up is by saying that when I was mayor, a lot of counties sent their industrial board over to see how we were recruiting so much industry. Now, not only do we have a good industrial board, we have a really good partnership with the state. And the state and uh, State Representative Judd Matheny, uh, uh, the state senator, those people really help you a lot in uh, industrial recruitment. But what does Coffee County have? Um, there was a study done. One thing you got to have is labor force, right? So there was a study done by about seven counties, and Coffee's one of them, by MTSU about the availability of labor in when, this community. When was this study? It was done when I was mayor, probably oh. uh, probably 2010, 11, okay. 12, right in there. Uh, and we had to do that because of recruiting larger industries. And the study showed that we had a lot of people, and I don't know exactly the number, but it was in the thousands of people that was available to, to come to one of those counties and go to work. And of course, that county needs to be Coffee County. Um, we have the land. Uh, we have um, what they call, uh, it's, a, it's a, a site that's already ready to go and it's approved by the state. It has the gas, the water, the sewer, everything ready to go. And then you call, what do you call it, Mayor? Ready? Can't say select. Yeah, but it's Select called, site. Yeah. Yeah, and we have those sites here, um, which saves uh, the uh, industry a lot of time and effort to get that done. Um, 
we have 400 acres close to the interstate with a, with a brand new road that um, when I was mayor, we, the, the city of Manchester and uh, Coffee County partnered up and they put that road in and it was cost a million dollars. And the deal was that if we um, didn't have industry in there within three years, we had to pay for that. So we stepped out there, Tom, and took a chance. And guess what? Within a year, we had two different industries out there. And this road comes, once you get off the interstate and come, uh, come down the base road, it runs you right into the industrial park. You cross 41 and, excuse me, and go straight into the industrial park. So what, what does that mean, Tom? Now we have another industrial park that's midway between Tallahoma and Manchester. But the interstate park, the fuel is a big deal, especially when you remember when it got $5 a gallon for gas. Yeah. Well, the average truck yeah. only- uh, Access to the interstate is a yes. pretty big deal. You know, the average truck, you, it's about six miles to a gallon. So uh, a lot of industry don't want to locate very far from the interstate. And we just happen to have, Tom, good okay. sites. How about, uh, how about how about why do my folks want to live here anyway? Well, let's talk about this. The quality of life here. Uh, you you have good schools. You have good hospitals. Uh, Hart and Hospital out here. I was on that board for eight years. You have good good hospitals. Um, what everybody likes. Uh, good lakes, golf courses. People like that kind of stuff. But let me tell you something, Tom. Well, recreation's a big deal. Yeah, but yeah. education. Education is a big deal when you're recruiting industry because those people want, like Great Lake Chief spent $100 million. Those people want to make sure that their employees have a, a good place to the send skills. their kids to school. And we do have that. We got some of the better schools in, um, in Tallahoma, Manchester, and Crawford Counties you're going to find anywhere. And so schools is a big one too. And that is a big one. Um, we have a center where that if they need to have meetings, large meetings, we can accommodate up to 400 people. And a lot of those industries, Tom's, use that uh, convention center out there for that, for, for, for meetings for the industry. And not just for, you know, once they locate here uh, in Coffee County, they have other industries and they'll have joint meetings. And they like that to be able to have motels and stay, everybody can stay in one spot that, that's a good selling point. Um, okay. So pretty well. Um, another thing, real quick, I'll say, we're halfway between Manchester. I mean, Manchester's halfway between, and Coffee County uh, is halfway between Nashville and Chattanooga, you know, for supplies. And also Huntsville. We're close to all of that. We're, we're like a little hub. And that's a good selling point, too, Tom. Okay. All right. Tim, you want to add, subtract, multiply? No, David pretty well covered it all, but we've got the best location in the state, I think, for industry to come here because we've got five exits <coughs> right on the interstate. Mm -hmm. We've got the land we space for the business. Got the best schools around. Got a, Coffee County's the best place I've ever lived. I've mean, not, not been to a lot of places, but I wouldn't go anywhere else because the people's friendly. It's a good, good place to live. But drawing in business here, we seem to be a business unfriendly county. We turn down a lot of business. Manchester could be a booming place, but we turn a lot of business down. I've been to some of the commission meetings and we turn them away all the time. We're losing business. Our tax rate could be re really low right now if we- Why would we do that? I have no idea why we'd run a, run a business away. Recently, there was a Korean company met with the mayor they was wanting to relocate their business here and employ a thousand people. And the mayor told them we didn't have that workforce here, so they left. Uh, there's a, one in particular that I remember is a right construction or paving company. He's got the land in Hillsboro and wanting to open a quarry there. He went around and got petitions from everybody that lives in Hillsboro. There was 700, 700 something for it, 50 against it. But he's been coming to these meetings for over 15 years, and every time we postpone it for more information, postpone it to hire another lawyer. We got a county attorney hired, but we hire another attorney to make decisions, and then we still postpone it. This is on the same quarry? No, it's, it's on, on this land this guy's bought. 
Yeah. And he's done over $10 million in business in Coffee County, and we've lost that tax over $10 million if he'd have been here. Okay. All right. Uh, Gary, you're up. I would say to a prospect, you've got to come to Coffee County just to see. We have uh, the first year we unveiled a state-of-the-art 21st century comprehensive county website. And in that, we had a contract with a company out of New York where they came and I spent uh, part of two days going out with a guy taking shots across the county so we could highlight Coffee County. And in that we had uh, six different chapters and you can go to our new website and check on that but we welcome the world of Coffee County. I opened the session with a little uh, introduction there in the commission room and welcome the world of Coffee County. We talked about industry, we talked about our school systems, uh, quality of life, whatever. And so whether you're in uh, Seattle, Washington, or Japan, or Pelham, or Franklin County, or wherever, you can come to Coffee County to visit. So we wanted to welcome the world to Coffee County. And uh, we, in that we highlighted the school systems, as David said, we do have some of the best school systems in the state of Tennessee right here. Mm -hmm. That is one of the criteria when businesses come, they want to know about your school systems. As was stated, they want to know how your lo location within a, uh, with the interstate. They, one of the criteria they look at now is, do you have a Walmart? Uh, that was that was new that came to the table, but we have those for people, and a study was done there in front of Walmart in Manchester, for example. Uh, you have about 15,000 vehicles a day going through there, and in that we uh, we welcome the world of Canyon. We are in the process right now in our joint park of finishing a, a spec building, a 100,000 square foot spec building. We hope to have that weather permitting that set us behind different times, but the target date was about uh, August 1. So we can complete that inside to the point we need to, and we already have companies looking at that. We are becoming, in this region, the, the Detroit of the South. What about and the comment about the uh, not having enough jobs for the career, enough okay. candidates, enough in that, candidates the, the for the The story career. that actually happened on that, not <clears throat> what was stated, was that we had a firm here that came a year ago, about a year ago. They had narrowed their site down to three locations, uh, Coffee County uh, and two, two out, of, out of state. They ended up, we found out this week, or last week, they ended up going to a port city in South Carolina. That was one of the sites they were looking at. When that delegation came, 17 of them flew here. We met with them on a Thursday evening, and then they came back Friday morning. The team, they broke out, we broke out into four sessions. One of those was on workforce development. Okay, I have never had that group to ask me specifically, do we have, in the discussion on the uh, workforce, they wanted to know, do we, could we provide that workforce? And they, I'm not talking about 500 jobs, or I'm talking about over 1,000 jobs. I won't mention the number. But they wanted assurance that this area could provide the workforce. We could have done that, but as we know, that would involve a lot of people being canalized from other, other industry. But they went back and they processed all that. We didn't hear back <coughs> from them a long time, but I have not told uh, a group of five people or whatever that we, don't, we can't provide 1,000 well, people. Was the answer, I guess, that we couldn't assure them that we had a thousand people available? I don't know. I wasn't <coughs> involved in that. That's been part of that local team of in, in, uh, industrial board members and some of the other. Uh, you had utility people there, whatever. I don't know the discussion that uh, resulted from all that as far as that being communicated to them by the by the people with the industrial board. Tom, uh, I'd like to comment on that though. I just told you we actually did have a seven county study that says we do have the right. labor force. And that was presented in but, that. But we that do was, have the labor force. That was several years ago. Yeah, yeah. but we still have it. I mean, that's, I'm sure they update that study all the time. Well, it'll be interesting. I guess I'll follow up on that in terms of uh, yeah. who told the folks we couldn't uh, assure them we had the, the labor force. And it is critical. That's a, actually, Absolutely. there's a lot of uh, criticism out there from uh, industry that we are not providing enough uh, qualified people in the increasingly technological. Right. Uh, but but we do have we have we have a good program that you know, the Megatronics program, which right. is, mm -hmm. that is one good program that attracts, industry likes that Megatronic program. Right. They really do, and we, uh, taking that a step further now, we do have, as we know, uh, in uh, concert with uh, the Tennessee College of Applied Technology in McMinnville, mm -hmm. they have set up a satellite. That's our first, you know, we've been working on this for a while, but we're excited about that coming to, uh, and I want to thank Keith Hayes and Viam for allowing that to go in a space in one of their buildings they provided. But we now have 20 uh, in that the state, they applied or supplied over $400,000 in high tech equipment. But now we have a class of 20. Uh, going to school in there in industrial maintenance and the plan is to have another class, a night class coming on in August 
for a night class on that. We've got to provide our, our industry, those workers and other key workers. I kind of lost track of that. Do we have the mechatronics uh, program in Coffee County? Well, Keith uh, Hayes at Biam, part of that mechatronics program evidently has moved to Keith Hayes, right? Mayor? Some has, but it's been But it's financed. in Warren County, too, you know. Yeah, yeah Warren County. A, and, it started in Warren County. Yeah, they've yes. been the leader. Yeah. Right? And you said, Tim, didn't you say that uh, you was campaigning that a lot of people mentioned that about the mechatronics, didn't you? Yes, sir. Critically important that yeah. we have that. I mean, uh, that's, that's one point that he was, we was talking about earlier that people had told him about how, how they, what did you say, they got out of class and how good of paying jobs they'd got or some, some of your people had told you that? Yeah, some of them, yes. Yeah. yeah. And well, so now down at MTSU, Tom, if I may, they now have a mechatronics class there where you mm -hmm. get a four-year degree, yeah. the only university in yeah. the country. You that can get a two-year degree, Tom. Yeah. And then you can do like right. the mayor said, have a four. And I think yeah. they had in start their, out with a two year. Yeah, they had in their first graduating class, I understand, about seventy five students. It's my understanding that virtually all of them had a job by the time mm -hmm. they graduated. Well that's yeah, what Tim said. I'm they sure told him. Uh, they've had the first graduation of the four year program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but all they right. graduated a lot of two year programs, right. a lot. David uh, uh, or Tim, you want to uh, do you want to contribute anything here in particular? Yeah, I just got one question. is why we would turn business away from Coffee County or give them a hard time to locate. Because if I was the mayor, I would do whatever necessary to get that company to locate because we've got to have it. But I, would, I, I want to know why we turn business away. Well, and I guess Gary would have to answer that. If I may comment on that. Coffee County set up a planning commission many years ago. And in that they have criteria and guidelines to go by. We adopted a public law 1101 that says basically that becomes law for what we can and can't do in the county. We are business friendly here, but they've got to apply, they've got to conform to the criteria and the guidelines and the zoning requirements that were set in that. In this particular case there, when they set this up many year, years ago, they did pro provide for a quarrying operation in a urban growth boundary, not out in the agriculture part of the county. That was just set in there years ago. And we've, do, we've discussed that issue many times. They yeah. know that. What are you talking and, about, a quarry? Yeah, yes, that's a quarry. Yeah. A quarry operation. But it doesn't fit in the agriculture zoning that was set up many years ago. Yeah. So we either go by the guidelines and, the, and what becomes law for us, or we violate that and open a door, and then where do you go when you have well, one to quarry? wasn't an issue in the Korean question. Oh, that wasn't an issue at all yeah. there. No. Okay. But we've tried to abide by the guidelines that the Planning Commission established years ago. And if we uh, violate those, we could be opening ourselves up to different lawsuits. And that's what we're trying to do to protect our county. Okay. Well, now uh, the election is passed and uh, you're sitting in the catbird seating. Uh, what are you looking at in terms of the, uh, the key issues? What are you going to be working on? What do you need to be working on? Uh, in Coffee County over the next uh, four years. And Tim, let's start with you this time. Well, the first thing I do is get out and recruit business or get somebody to recruit the business for us because we've got to have it. Coffee County's dying. I'd be a full-time mayor. I'd be there five days a week like I'm supposed to be. Sometimes Gary's gone. He's not full-time. But a mayor needs to be there full-time. Is that a full-time job? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Paid full time? Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, and Tom, may I respond to that? From day one, I've been full time at that job. Just because I may not be in the office when someone calls, as David knows from having been there eight years, that doesn't mean I'm not in the county, I'm going to meetings, whatever, trying to do what I can and should be doing as the mayor of this county. Uh, some days those jo those hours are 8, 10, and 12 hour days as he knows. And sometimes on Saturdays, you have meetings on Saturdays, and I think the record I had yeah. in one day was seven meetings, but okay. I am full time and I've been that. You could, uh, you could look at the time records. Tim, you got, we're talking about key issues over the next four years. Uh, you said industrial recruitment is your uh, number one. Is that, uh, well, is that's that where you're going to spend all your time? No, sir. I'm going to work on the budget. I'm going to quit wasting money. We, we spent a lot of money and waste a lot of money in Coffee County. We've got to quit doing that because it's costing the taxpayers. And the taxpayers I talk to want us to be accountable for that money. And the 
of course, the sheriff's department. They're underpaid. I worked there eight years, and the reason I quit because I wouldn't make any money. You had to work two jobs to survive. So we've got to work on that. That's a key issue, and I don't know whether it's been settled in this uh, budget go around or not. Uh, uh, Sheriff Graves has been very strong about the fact that his folks are underpaid. He loses them. He has a lot of turnover. Uh, it makes the operation less efficient and costs money to conduct the additional training. So trying to bring those uh, salaries up, but I don't know where that where that stands. Is that uh, is he going to get any help this, uh, well, this the, budget session? They passed uh, a raise for the deputies. So they got a raise. It was 35 cents, which is about $2.50 a day, which amounts to nothing. <clears throat> 35 cents? Yes, sir. An hour? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, he was, uh, I don't know, something on the order of two or three bucks behind competitive mm -hmm. positions. It needs to around. be because, like I said, the reason I quit, I almost doubled my pay when I quit, back when I quit. And these deputies now, when they go to the academy, they stay for a short time and they're looking for a different job because they can get a, a good raise right when they leave. So we train them for somebody else. Yeah. We're training for somebody else. And that, that's a big problem. Yeah. Well, and train I, them for the two cities in the base. That's the, a big help. Ain't that right, Tim? Yes, sir. Yeah, they leave for Manchester and Tullahoma in the base. Okay. Well, uh, let's talk some about the, uh, the overall budget. Uh, what is the budget, uh, and Gary, I guess you should be uh, uh, up pretty close to this. What is the budget this time? And uh, you said it was passed in the commission meeting a night or two ago. Uh, so how much is the budget, and is it up or down or sideways? And uh, also there was some talk about having to uh, come up with a modest uh, tax increase. Uh, where, does, where does all that stand? Glad you asked, Tom. There was talk about a modest tax increase. As everyone in the county knows, we have gone through an extensive reassessment process. Now, as far as the tax rate, that we did adopt the certified tax rate the other day that they finally sent to us last Tuesday. We've been trying to get that from Nashville for some time. And uh, the assessor's office has gone through an extensive process in going through all the reassessment and all that and uh, trying to determine as close as they can the proper values for properties all across the county. Extensive process. Having said that, uh, the budget that next year, uh, can in, including the school system, will be over $75 million. Okay, we did talk the other night and the- $75 million? Setting five million for the next year, the next fiscal year starting July 1 through June 3rd of next year. We've been trying to keep our uh, operating reserve fund balance up at around two and a half million or so. And we, we tried to do that. Our best guesstimate is that it'll be a little less than that next year, but we did the other day in the. Uh, What'll be a little less? Our operating reserve fund balance. Uh, we want to try to keep it about two and a half, but with some of the. Uh, we did not adopt a tax increase, as I said. So we're thinking of our best guess would be that may be 2.1, 2.2 well, million. Did you use 300,000 of your reserve when you did that? Yeah. Yeah. So they actually. And we got money in some different reserves, right. so we had to borrow. Yeah, you, take are, you are talking about the rainy day fund. Yeah. Uh, Yes, the reserve fund, and you've had to tap it. Right. So. But we, but we did not the other night have a tax increase uh, above you, the uniform. Didn't y'all also? Didn't you cut the sheriff's budget? Was it like five percent? No. What we did in that one of the commissioners, my, yeah, the, one of the commissioners made the recommendation right. that on all yeah. the departments that have a total budget for the year of five hundred or less, those would cut one percent. One percent. Those from a half million to a million would cut two percent. Any of the departments having a budget over four million. As, uh, excuse me, over one million. one million would cut four percent. Yeah, uh, and, and that, that, and that gets the sheriff department. So, though that thirty-five cents might be gone, Tim. Yeah. But that if you out, take four percent, uh, what is the operating budget of the sheriff now? He's got two different. It's about budgets. nine. Well, you actually got three. You got the yeah. workhouse or the yeah. annex, yeah. and the jail well, portion, when I was there. and the uh, yeah the jail portion, and the. Uh, the deputy so what's portion. The total of them? So the total that's over nine million, and that's so what that's four percent of, of nine million. Yeah, that's oh. three sixty thousand. So yeah, what well. we factored in that was all that together. If all that can be done, that cut Go ahead. That, that cuts down uh, about five hundred twenty thousand, as best we can guesstimate, from the 
level we were working from. So that puts us back to about 2.1, 2.2 million, taking the 300,000 out of the rainy day fund. But part of this whole dilemma came about when the Sheriff Department submitted a budget increase for this next fiscal year that was over a million dollars over where we were last year. Well, going from eight million to over yeah. nine million. And, so that put uh, the whole process in the tailspin. Yeah. And, we and worked concentrating on two areas, uh, increasing the salaries for his yes, folks uh, that he's losing, yeah. and the other was the uh, cost of the yeah. uh, uh, workhouse. Annex, yeah, yeah. The workhouse. And, and so we'll come back to that. Okay. Meanwhile, we got to take a, a commercial break, folks, and we'll come back you and pick up on again? the budget. Russell Barnett Hometown Auto Rental has proudly served your auto rental for over 30 years. Check out this huge selection to choose from. Small car, mid-size car, full-size car, crossover vehicle, SUV, minivan, pickup trucks, 12 and 15 passenger vans. Whether big or small, Russell Barnett Hometown Auto Rental has them all. Stop by our two locations to serve you, Tullahoma and in Winchester. And remember, my question is, why rent anywhere else? It's time for every family and business in Tullahoma to go green and recycle. Tullahoma Public Works makes it simple and easy to recycle. Just place your recyclable materials, paper, plastic, aluminum, and cardboard beside your garbage container on the same day your garbage is picked up. Your recycled materials don't have to be in a fancy container. Recycling is not only the right thing to do, it makes sense. Recycling pays. Paying to bury our garbage costs each of us. Please do your part. Let's go green, Tullahoma, and recycle. When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. another story altogether on the way they do that. We have no control over it. We're back, folks, and uh, we're talking today with the uh, three candidates for the Coffee County mayor. Uh, they are uh, the incumbent, uh, Gary Cordell, who's our Republican candidate. Uh, the Democrats uh, have uh, David Pennington, who is a businessman of long standing and uh, has himself served as county mayor a couple of times. Um, and we have Tim uh, Brown, who is uh, running as an independent uh, this time and uh, has, uh, has his own unique view of things. So uh, let's go back and I want to I wanna concentrate for the moment and see if we can clarify what's actually happened to the sheriff's budget, uh, which was a big issue, I think and the, uh, including uh, the question of whether the uh, workhouse uh, annex is going to continue to function uh, as such. So the overall budget he put in was like 16 percent. A big chunk of it was in the cost of running the annex, and the other big chunk was trying to get, I think, a couple of bucks, Tim, mm -hmm. for, yes. his, uh, for his uh, key uh, workforce, a couple of bucks raised. And uh, he's justified that for any number of years on the basis that uh, his people are underpaid compared to other jobs in the county and other uh, law enforcement jobs in the surrounding areas. So he's losing a lot of people, uh, cost him to have to recruit more and to train them. And the training is expensive. And then meanwhile, he's a lot less efficient if he's uh, understaffed. So uh, that's a big issue, and it seems like uh, it's been around for quite a while, and I'm not sure about what we're continuing to ducking it. Uh, but somebody, somebody straighten me out here. Where well, does that stand? Well, when David? I was mayor, we, we gave the sheriff's department, uh, I know two and I think three different raises to try to bring them up. And 
I agree with the sheriff. I mean, it's it's, it's nothing but a, a training center for, and you can't blame Tallahoma or Manchester or the base. I mean, they're looking for qualified people, and you can't blame the person that's. Uh, went to work, but by the way, I think the sheriff makes him stay like for two years to take care of that training. I think he's got some kind of a contract. Is that right, Peter? That is true. Okay, so, so. So if they go through the training program, they, they got to stay, stay two years three with years. The, the sheriff's department. Yeah. But we need to get that up. We need to, we need that to be where there wouldn't be no competition other than maybe the quality of life issues or something, you know, from one, from one city well, to the county. Well, where does that stand? How much did we actually give him? Well, trip? I don't. The, the mayor just said they cut 360000 out of the sheriff's budget at the last minute, so I'm sure the sheriff don't even know where he stands right now. Right. I mean, they just, at the very last, right, right. Uh, one of the commissioners decided not to do the eight cents or whatever it was tax, and he, he did the math, and he said, you heard the figures the mayor said, but what it amounted to for the sheriff and Heather Duncan's office, too, mm -hmm. they, cut, they cut money out of Heather Duncan's office, too. And we'll be out of the other offices as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I mean, it's a pretty but good chunk. bigger percentage yeah. on those yeah, on because those of too. Yeah. Well, right. It sounds like I thought I heard a number a minute ago that on the sheriff's raises where he was looking for a couple of bucks, he got something like 35 cents. Well, did he, I hear that? He, maybe he didn't get it now because it took 360 out at the last minute, Tom. Well, what do you think, Gary? Uh, well, the bottom line to this, and I totally agree that those law enforcement personnel, and we've talked about that, we have a personnel compensation committee, we've talked about that different times as to how, how do we raise their compensation, which they desperately need. We are, we're all in agreement with that, but it takes dollars. And when you look at a budget and we try to fine tune all that, then at the end of the day it comes down, are we going to have, where can we cut? to accomplish that, or do we cut everyone, or do we have a tax increase? So the people spoke loud and clear the other night that we do not want a tax increase. So that was the response, the action was taken was a response to that. And I went on record, Tom, uh, last summer in the process of have, requesting or suggesting a cost of living increase for all of our county employees across the table. And I put that back on the table then when we started the process <coughs> in February. And But, but Mayor, they do get a cost of living. They get one, they get they step get in three, gray, but they, they get three percent every two years or one and a half percent right. a year. Let's make sure everybody understands that That's they do get that system. no matter what. It's That's not like they were where they were 15 yeah. years ago. No, they always they get, get one and a half percent a year is what it okay. to. They get step and grade, but we were requesting a cost of living. That adjustment hasn't okay. been made since 2007. You know, right. the, right. Real, the real issue here, when you start, if, if the budget folks start looking at the budget and they've got a big lump over here they got to compensate for, and instead of dealing with that, and maybe cut some folks more than uh, than you might otherwise like, but basically cross the board reductions, and you duck the question of whether you've got a particular problem here that ought to be dealt with, and you just kind of refuse to deal with it. And it looks to me like that's where we stand on the on the sheriff's pay. Tom, two big budgets that really, the you know, the county owes 71 million. The two biggest things on the budget is. 44 for the schools and 20 for the jail right now, and 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 I said that to say this: over in Rutherford County, they got they owe 480 million dollars. Guess what it's on, Tom? Schools, jails, and justice centers. I mean, so it's a constant battle all the time over that's schools true. and jails. I mean, that's your two biggest things that eat the yeah, budget up. Yeah. But. I think also that those, our two most important functions. Sir. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Education, got, safety. You're exactly right. It's your, it's your duty to make sure those two things are taken care of. I mean, that's, that's. I mean, you got those two. You got to take care of. When I was, when I first became mayor, we had 21 portables, Tom. That's not a good, uh, in good place for the. That's not a quality place for students to learn. Yeah. And it's not a good recruiting tool neither, Tom. We don't have those now, though. And by the way, that $44 million that I mentioned to you about the schools, 75% of that is paid by sales tax that the county itself voted for that five, uh, that a half a uh, percent increase. The county voted to do that, and it helped not only the Coffee County school system, it helped Tallahoma school system and Manchester. But 75% of that $44 million payment is made with sales tax, Tom. Okay. Let's go back a minute to the salary issue. Would you do something more to fix that than the, the, the commission has currently done? On the, the police officers? Yeah. You, you've got to, Tom. 
Where, but, where would you get it from? <clears throat> well, I, I don't, I mean, I don't have that answer because I've not been the mayor for four years. Maybe the mayor, he's probably got some ideas. Where can we get it from, mayor? We have no provision to do that other than a sales tax, excuse me, a property tax yeah. increase. That's, that the what, only way? that's the only way to get that. And I, we totally agree that they need some, but I've got to balance. When, when you talk with budget and finance and the, and the process, yeah. you've got to balance all I the know. departments. And if you give this department something, then the others say, well, what about us? That's what, you, that's yeah. what you come back to. I know. <laughs> but, but you, look, our safety is at risk without those officers out there to answer those calls. That was another question we didn't yeah. talk about. Not only, the, not only the, just the police safety. officers, what about the ambulance service, too? You know, when you call for an ambulance, there's a reason you call, Tom. You know, you yeah. need it or you wouldn't be calling. Yeah. And we're having... Well, let's, uh, let's take a minute. Tim, you got a... You want to add something on the question of the sheriff's budget? Yes, sir. The problem that the sheriff's department's got, is, it, it's not just come up recently. It's, it was four yeah. years ago, and yeah. they've known about it the whole time, and yeah. they've done absolutely nothing to fix the problem. We wait to the last minute, right before the deadline of the budget, to try to fix it, and by then it's too late. Well, Maybe it's election so time. So you cut everybody the same. You know? Yeah. Well, the, four, the sheriff's department gets 4%, yeah. so they're going to lose their 35 That's a cent raise, plus chicken probably a little out. more. Yeah. But there's money to be found out there. Is it? The conference center. I mean, we got a problem with the conference center. You got okay. You got an idea where some money should be found? Gary mentioned in the last debate that the conference center is improving every year. Mm -hmm. I've got a different opinion on it. <laughs> I've got the numbers here, so I can state them correctly. In 2015, the loss was $301,000. 2016, 407,000. 2017, 506,000. I mean, we're going in the opposite direction. Yeah, we're losing money. But this year, the budget is 250,000. But for, for each for the city and the county. But it is. But it'll get worse. The budget for the center. For for the, the, is, yeah, it's, it's, it's cut in half now. Yeah. <clears throat> They're predicting the $500,000 loss again. Uh, the salaries have been going up at the conference center. Yeah. 2015, the salaries, combined salaries, 411,000. 2016, 500. And, 43 in 2017, 663. I mean, that's yeah, a lot. Yeah, that many employees, do you? Uh, there, I guess. How many do they have here? You know? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So the money can. Right. If we could do something with the conference center until we get a hold of it, then we'd have money f All for right. the sheriff's budget. Let me share something well, on, re regarding that, if I may, on the conference center. A lot of people from outside the system think, well, the county can fix that. This mayor knows, as I do, that a contract was set in place over 17 years ago with agreement with the county commission at that time and the Manchester Board of Aldermen where the, we were locked in to a 20 year term of paying the debt. We owe three more years on that and in the contract the agreement was that you split the losses 50-50 through, throughout. Now the, 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 the factors that were looked at when this, at the inception were some of those were flawed. 50-50 in Manchester and the county? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we have a, uh, the operation of that, the oversight of that is with the uh, PBA. And, you know, Mr. Pena sets on that. We have a seven member yeah. PBA board. The operation of that, they are accountable for and oversee the operation of that. County government does not have any say so at, from the standpoint of just dissolve it. We can't do that. It's, we've got a contract. Well, and if we, well, and if we unless break, it was paid who, off. Who comes up with the shortage of uh, who pays for the. The county Over and the city. Budget. Yeah. The county uh, and the city. That goes back but to you the don't have any, any way so well, That was set in concrete so years yeah. ago, and our people yeah. don't understand that. It's easy to look in from the outside and say, <laughs> we'll do this and that, whatever, but we got a contract. If we renege, if the county reneges on that contract and says okay. to Manchester City, we're not going to pay next year, uh, then right. we could well be in a lawsuit with the well, city. Well, co conference centers are kind of a. Yeah, that's a another issue. Problem yeah. Well, let me tell you something, too, uh, about it, Tom, because they stuck me on that board a couple of years ago, and uh, there was this lady that they had hired, and, um, well, they just prosecuted her. She stole money. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, not only did she steal money, she actually moved money from the equipment replacement fund right. and put it into the operational so that, that uh, you know, it'd take a year because they used to just audit it once a year, but now we set up a committee that audits every month. So those things can't happen now. That's one of the things that we've done. Uh, and internal controls are set yes. in place to safeguard Absolutely. That. And we actually have somebody that has some skin in the game, which is the county. Uh, we have Rush Gricken on that board, and right. we have the yeah. uh, city. Uh, but but um, 
So, so what's happened to the conference center? It's pretty simple. The equipment money over three hundred thousand that she funneled back in within a year. Uh, that building's old, and a lot of things happened to it. And a lot of this money you see here, it's not for the operations, but uh, it's because they're having to replace roofs, they're having to replace flooring, plumbing, equipment. You know, the uh, the parking lot. You know, maintenance issues. Yeah, the maintenance issues that they would have had the money to do it had the lady not. Uh, and let me just say this. Uh, that conference center is not the first time that anybody has ever taken money from the government. There's plenty of people in prison that took money from the cities and the counties and the state. You know, so the best you can do, in all fairness to the people that was there before I got there, the best you can do is, is do your job as volunteers. They're volunteers, Tom. And do your job and watch it and try to, you know, it's your, your duty to try to watch it. But, uh, like I said, there are cities and counties and states that got stole from all the time. Don't you think those people got watched? But some way, yeah. a thief is a thief, Tom. It's hard to catch them. Okay. <clears throat> I want to come back uh, briefly to one particular issue I'm back on the sheriff's budget, and that is uh, the workforce, the workhouse. Uh, the question is, <clears throat> a big chunk of, it, of the budget this year was to, was to uh, pay for the annex where the workforce is housed. The workforce goes out and does work for the county and other things. And uh, it also helps to shorten their term mm -hmm. so that they're in, uh, they're in the who's gal for a shorter period of time. Half the time. So, uh, and there's a lot of support for that. Right. But uh, the question really is, uh, and the sheriff has objected to having to close the annex and bring the, those people back into the jail. Uh, he says he can't operate the workforce out of the jail uh, <clears throat> satisfactorily. So, what do we, uh, what do we do with this? And is the work, is well, the Tom, workforce? Tom, can we address that about it, You know, it's a question of either we keep it open and fund it, or we close it. Well, let's let's talk about that a little bit. I see the sheriff's point, and Tim, you chime in because you're the deputy. You, if you operate that out of the main jail, and you have a group in there that that kind of controls the, I'm talking about prisoners, that kind of controls the prisoners. You say, you tell that prisoner, say, now you're going out on the work patrol today, there's 30 of them, and if you don't bring back what somebody's got put out there for us, then then we're going to beat you up. And what happens, Tom, is they, they'll, they would beat those people up, they would knock their eye sockets out, they would break their jaws. And guess what, uh, our medical, medical cost goes up. Yeah, uh, it's 1.2 now. Yeah. So what savings we do have at the workhouse, it would be eat up in medical time. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you something else, those 30 people that's working for the cities now, if you replace those people at $10 an hour, and uh, if you do the math on that, just on the, at $10 an hour to 30 people, that's over a half a million dollars it would cost the other taxpayers, because the cities do pay county taxes, and now anybody that's working one of those prisoners is paying county taxes. It's the nonprofit or, or the cities. So, and then if you add 450 a month for if the if the cities had to hire these people to replace these prisoners at, at 450 a month just to do the insurance, and then if you done the 7.65 Social Security, then if you did the five percent match on the four on one, and then if you give them holidays and vacation days, it'd be over nine hundred thousand. And so instead of saving five hundred thousand if you close the annex, you're actually going to cost the taxpayers another four hundred thousand. The way I do the math. You going to uh, you going to keep the index? The annex? If I if I'm elected mayor, I'm keeping it. You're keeping the annex. I'm keeping it. All right. And with the uh, and you what going you to, say, you're going to have to come Tim, up with the are money. Are you keeping it? You got to come up with the money to pay for it. Well, I mean, it's it's paid for right now. They're doing it. The budget's already passed. Uh, not enough to run it. It's a well. How how much was just the uh, workhouse side of it? About five hundred thirty thousand. No, I mean that he asked extra. He didn't ask for. It's almost three hundred two seventy five or whatever extra. Two seventy five. So it sounds like um, not only did he lose the two seventy five, but he lost. Uh, he lost three hundred and sixty thousand, so almost another ninety thousand or so. so I, don't, I don't, you know, that's a question. But I, I do know the one thing: yeah. I can do math well enough to know that we need to keep it open because well, if the cities okay. who are taxpayers have to replace those people, um, then it's going to cost us more than. Sounds to me thousand. like though, we've we've left a sizable budget problem there yeah. that yeah. you're going to have to look at, uh, Tim. 
What do you got to say? We've spent so much money on the annex lately. If we did close it down and we change our mind and decide it was the right thing to do, I don't think we could reopen it because it would never pass codes. The state would never reopen it. So then we're going to be. What would you spend on it, man? Finally, I you respond. Keep it, you keep it open? I'd keep it open. I'd find the money somewhere. Find the money we can, somewhere. We can find it. It's there. We're just going to have to. May I respond to those questions or points? Yeah, briefly. We spent about $100,000 on remodeling that. Okay? We've got that certified. Now, I've done research and checked with TCI, Tennessee Correction Institute, and our uh, jail specialist with CTAS, with 40 years' experience in jail operations. Counties all across this state are operating a work program out of the main jail. Most of the counties are operating out of the main jail. It can be done, and my point in even putting it on the table earlier was, if we can save, and yes, you do run a risk of getting someone hurt coming in from that, but if you sanitize the people properly coming in, make sure they don't bring in or limit the contraband. We have that issue now in the main jail with no outside people coming in or at the annex. But if you sanitize those people properly, you limit the introduction of contraband inside the system. Now, if you could, with eight pods out there, if you take your minimum security pod and put those people in there, let them come into that, and they go back and forth. You want to that, close the annex? Sir? You want to close the annex? I suggested earlier I wanted to save some money and give those officers raises, but that's off the table now. That's, that's right. the bottom line. The question is, do you want to close the not annex? Not now. It's off, the, it's off the table now. They did not vote to do that. It's a, it's a, it's a non-issue now. Yes or no? Yes, it's a non-issue. Well, not necessarily. Yeah. The money could still be juggled around, you know, if you close the annex. The county commission would have to vote. some more money for raises. Yeah, the sheriff could close that, or the county yeah. commission would have to give the mayor's office authority to do that, which we do not have to do that. But it's a non-issue now. It's in the budget, so well, I'm saying let's roll with it as it, as well, it is. Well, I'm for and, keeping it open, and I, or you, you are too, right, for keeping it open? Yeah, now. Okay. For sure. You, you but can't. The, but no. they, but it was, it 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 was the, the yes. counties can yes, do that out of the main jail. That's the point I was making a while ago. That but, would save our taxpayers. But, but, but the point is, the sheriff you says that he's not going to do it. You won't be able to do it. The point is, Tom, the sheriff says he's not going to do it. It's his decision, yeah. so it's a dead issue now. We're keeping okay. the annex open. All right. We're going to leave the budget to uh, <laughs> see, folks. Good. we got just a couple of minutes left. I want to make a quick survey. We've had a lot of controversy over... Bonnaroo in the last uh, year, and uh, we took a, a year's worth of negotiation to uh, refrain from solving the problem. Uh, I'd just like a quick opinion. What do you think about Bonnaroo? Is it an asset for us? And uh, roughly what uh, should be their contribution uh, to the community? Uh, where do I want to start? Tim, I think I want to start with you. Well, we need Bonnaroo. They bring a lot to our county tax dollars and, and money. I think we need to uh, be more careful the way we treat them because we're not treating them very well with trying to get a new contract and trying to make them pay more money because we're going to run them off. We don't ask the other business in town to pay, you know, keep paying. If you make more money, pay more money. We don't ask them that. But we need them. It's, it's a big asset to Coffee County. And, we, and I think now we've got dependent on them, which now we, we can't afford to lose them. Okay. Gary? We do need to keep Bonnaroo. They provide, they bring in with sales tax revenue and property tax and all that comes in over a million dollars into this county. Mm -hmm. Were they not here, uh, that would be with the current services we have, we're talking about a tax increase. We do need them, they bring a lot to the table. And we have been in discussion with them. Some of those discussions broke off in like in January, whatever, as far as long-term contract. And after the, uh, you know, I'm waiting on them to get back with us now to start those discussions again. We did finally reach an agreement in June regarding the payment of the $205,000 for this year. They did pay that, we've got to check on that. That goes in their general operating fund. That, that you got to keep the, it to 200000 in the general operating fund. Well, that's what they paid for the, the current year we're in now. We do not have an agreement with them for the next year, so we don't know what we're going to receive from them now. They have been a good partner. We have been in discussion, by the way, with uh, the State Fair Board regarding the possibility of locating the State Fair here. I'm not talking about a two-week event in September. With that, that would come with uh, some of the plans that would provide over 120 or 30 days of activity out there during the year. We don't know the financial impact the of that fair. yet. Do the Bonnaroo folks want the state fair in there? We're in discussion on that. They've looked at two or three counties because apparently the state fair board in Nashville is talking about discontinuing the contract down there after this September and it's got to go somewhere. And we're one of the counties that's in that discussion. That's all I can comment on. 
regarding that at this time. <clears throat> Tom? Well, he didn't answer the question, I don't think. Does, does the Bonnaroo organization want the state fair in there? Yes, they've, they've gone on record as they would accommodate and try to work with that and want that. David? Well, real quick, we're running out of time, but um, Bonnaroo is over a $60 million economic impact to the state of Tennessee. Right, tremendous. <clears throat> and like he said, over a million dollars just directly to the county, which saves the county about a dime on property taxes. Right. But not, let's get past all that. Look at all the nonprofits that set up there and have one bin a year instead of having to knock on your door 12 times, uh, 12 times a year for some kind of fundraiser. They go out Bonnaroo to do the one fundraiser. But Bonnaroo puts a lot of money into our school system. They do a lot of grants, uh, matching grants. They spend millions in this community. And we That's need true. to keep Bonnaroo here. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, guess what? Folks, we have run out of time. Uh, we've had a, a good, lively discussion. I hope uh, you've got, uh, <clears throat> you're enlightened somewhat on uh, being able to, uh, to uh, handle the uh, <clears throat> election coming up. Uh, so let's that. take a short commercial break and we'll have to wind up. Russell's got your truck, man. Russell's got your truck. Big, bigger, and even bigger. Russell Barnett has any size truck for any size need. Chevrolet, Ford, GMC, Ram. Check us out on the web at russellbarnett.com. Our selection is so huge, we may need our own zip code. So my question is, why buy your next truck anywhere else? With the best selection anywhere, Russell's got your truck, man. The day the Lord created hope could be the same day he created spring. Springtime's here. It's a good time to get our air conditioners checked out before those hot summer days get here. We've been here for a little over 35 years. It's been our pleasure to serve our community. We'd like to thank you for Tullahoma's finest and from all of us to all of you. Thank you. We've been talking today, folks, with the three candidates for Coffee County Mayor, Gary Cordell, the incumbent Republican, uh, David Pennington, who's seeking a, another shot at it, uh, running as a Democrat, and Tim Brown is an independent, and uh, he's a newcomer to the scene and uh, has some interesting ideas of his own. Uh, so I want to thank you, gentlemen, for taking time to be with us and thank to you. Uh, share your ideas with the voters. Uh, remind you folks that the election is coming up on the 2nd of August, not too far away. We have uh, early voting beginning July the 13th uh, through the 28th, either at CD Stamps or at the Coffee County Plaza. And uh, our turnout is uh, generally fairly dismal, and uh, I want to encourage you to really think seriously about it. All of the county positions and all of the city positions are being determined in August. And uh, primary, of course, for state and national positions. So please come out and vote. Meanwhile, thanks for inviting us into your parlor, and we'll see you next time.